So this is some random data points that I've created. You can see we have an x variable. And let's think of that as the predictor as we usually would in the regression format. And we have a y variable. We can think of that as the outcome. And what I want you to think about as you look at this picture is how we might predict the mean of y given x. So it's the same question we've been asking ourselves all along as we talk about t-tests, as we talk about f-tests, as we talk about regression, equivalently as we talk about ANOVA. How can we best predict the mean of y given x? Now if you look at this, it's clear that a line is not going to do it. Right? It's clear that a line is not going to do it. One line. But let's think of some other ways that might work better. So I'm going to draw something like this on the board. Here's x, here's y, and here's essentially what that looks like. Okay, something like this. And so if I just draw a line of best fit, it's going to go across like this. It's not going to give us very good predictions. So we can think of a couple other things to do. And as you're staring at this, I hope you're thinking of different ideas. One suggestion I've gotten from students before is to make two lines. And that'll work pretty well, right? Maybe one line like that and one line like that. That's probably the simplest possible example of this particular non-parametric method. This non-parametric method is called splines, spline models. What is a spline? You take a bunch of segments and you attach them together and you use those to predict what y will be given x. So if I, choose, if I chose to make this spline model so for this data to predict y given x, what I've done is I've drawn two straight lines. They're supposed to be straight in this picture. So then, if I next get an x value right here, my prediction might be wherever it falls on that particular line. If I get one here, it might be there. That's the idea. There are not going to be any hypothesis tests. There are not going to be any confidence intervals. There are not going to be any p-values. All there are going to be are predictions of y with given values of x. That's it. So you've already got the idea of splines, okay? That's the whole thing. But there are more complicated or better ways to do this. So if you look carefully at these points I've drawn, okay, this one is actually more like a curve than a line. And you can also have spline models where instead of a set of lines, you might have a set of curves. So maybe we want to model these points by drawing one curve like this, maybe a straight line like that and another curve like that. That's totally fine too. And the way I've drawn this particular picture, that actually looks really good. Right? Or maybe I want to, and that's a spline model as well, maybe I want to do even better. As you look at this, think about what I could do to make the residuals as small as possible. I could just connect all these dots, right? Now as I connect these dots, I want you to think about What's the problem with just connecting these dots? What's the problem with just connecting these 